yet. But that's okay. Come on in. Are you in the class? Yes. Welcome. Hello. You missed all the important stuff. Oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you fill her, fill them in if, if it's okay. something that they need to know. And I'm glad you brought your towels. I don't know if we use them today or not, but lots of flute players, I would say probably 90% of the flute players that I have observed and met have some kind of tension issues going on up here. How many of you guys have some kind of feeling of tension or overwork or pain? Yeah. It's um, at what I would call epidemic proportions. <laughs> and I firmly believe that the main reason for that is that all of our pedagogy addresses the body pretty much from here up. And we almost never go to a lesson or hear a teacher talk about anything from here down. And what that means is that we're basically playing with only part of our bodies. And what we want, so that we can play like Euron and Stephen when the time arrives, we want to be able to use every cell. So a lot of what we're going to be doing this week is talking about how to include the rest of your body, how to understand how things work, what are the connections between the legs and the arms, and how we can let go of something. All right, do it again. Just go into your, don't try to act. Just do your normal star reflex. Whatever you do if you, you know, a bear showed up in the woods here. Okay, now, what feels good? Stay there. Okay, what do you notice? Where? Where? Everywhere, Everywhere yeah. <laughs> your neck is short, right? Your shoulders are pulled up and in. How do your legs feel? They're kind of pulled up and away from the ground. All of this is designed to protect your vital organs, because that's what's most important when you're dealing with a bear. Okay, now take a breath. And float up out of there. So let's do that again, but this time it's only a small bear. It's not really threatening here, just a little, a little startle reflex. And just notice, really notice what it feels like in your back, in your hands, in your arms, in your legs, in your feet. Take a breath. And float out of it. Now, do a startle reflex that's so small that I can't see it, but you can feel it. You notice how the room just got very quiet? <laughs> Nobody's moving. Sometimes we walk around 24 hours a day like this. We've got so much to do. It's like, I've got to get this news. You know, we're so busy and so involved in what we're doing that we forget to just go. That's right. So the first thing I want you to know is that you have the power to undo that tension. All the tension that we carry around with us, lots of people say we carry tension, um, is some version of the startle reflex. You know, it's just some version of this pattern of tension, which notice you notice is a whole body pattern of tension. Everything was involved from your toes up. So let's try it again. A very small star. Feel it. Take a breath. Float up out of it. And notice how your feet feel now. Can you feel the ground better? You actually get more support from the ground when you let go. So go ahead and have a seat. That's the first thing I want to do in, in way of introduction today. So that you know that at any time when you notice that you're tense, you can just go, oh. That's just a start of reflex. Okay. And float out. The second thing I want to What other senses are there besides sight, sound, and touch? Smell. I think that's the first thing I noticed when I came in here. Oh, I'm at Wild Acres. It smells moldy because it's damp. It's always the first thing I notice is smell. It's just the way it is, you know, before they had air conditioners. What else? Taste. Taste, yeah. Nobody mentioned but that they were still tasting lunch. And there's another very important sense that you actually mentioned. Some of you mentioned the thing. The way you feel your body to be. That's your kinesthetic sense. So if you put your hand behind your head and you wiggle your fingers, how do you know that your fingers are wiggling? I mean, you might feel the air going past them, but how do you know what shape? Everybody's hand is a different shape. You're wiggling it in a different way. How do you know what, what that's doing? What's, tell, what's giving you that information? Nobody knows? It's a miracle! <laughs> <laughs> you have to, the, 
the way she put it is, we want to put music education on a sound somatic foundation. Somatic means mind body, to do with the body. So that what we're teaching ourselves and our students is about how the body works to play music, because that's really our instrument. We can't do anything without a body. Food doesn't play itself. <laughs> well, maybe if you put it out there and the wind goes whistling by, there'll be a little tune, but that's what we want to know. And so that's what this course is designed to do, to give, you, um, to give us a sense of what's going on when we're playing and how to do it in a way that's going to work for us and not work against us. So, is the bottom, where do you think of as the bottom of your breathing structures? Bottom, like where the air's kind of coming Where's the bottom of the things that move the air? Like the diaphragm? Whatever you think. This is a, I'm going to ask you guys lots of questions. And the only way to answer the question is not, not to try to find the right answer, uh -huh. but to check into your body and see what you feel. I think more on here. Okay. Okay, good. So that's your map of where the breathing structures are, right? Um, but I want everybody to know, and we'll, I'll bring out a picture on the computer a little bit later. <laughs> that the diaphragm is way up inside here. So find your sternum here, find the bottom of it, and right underneath there, at the, find your heart also. Because the bottom of the heart is on the top of the diaphragm. So way up here is where your diaphragm is. You're looking very puzzled. No, I'm just thinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> way up in here. Now, since you had the course, mm -hmm. what happens when the diaphragm pushes down? What happens to everything in here? It goes whoosh. Yeah. Uh, let's say it gets a nice massage. It's not really compression because things are moving. Everything out here is moving. Why don't the abs work to take air in? It's too much tension. Well, it's not their job. Yeah. <laughs> Whose job is it to bring air into the lungs? Diaphragm and the rib muscles, yeah. And they do that by just changing the pressure so the air comes rushing in. You don't have to do anything to breathe. Just think about that for a second. How many years have you spent trying to take in enough air? <laughs> you don't have to do anything to breathe. It's going to come in all by itself. <laughs> so blow out your air up and wait. Everybody try this. Just wait until the air comes in all by itself. What does that feel like? Relax. Relax. How much effort was that? Not much. Not much at all. That's all you have to do to play the flute. Yeah. 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 So, what did you guys hear in the difference between the first time she played it and just then? More what? Relax. Yeah. And what was the difference in the quality of the sound? Smoother. Smoother. It was smoother. What else? What? It was more resonant, absolutely. Yeah, it was a bigger, more open sound. Why do you suppose that is? Because I wasn't so tense inside, so I Two reasons, going. right. One is you weren't, actually there's three reasons. One is you weren't tense, so there was actually, you know, more muscle and bone available to fiber. Mm -hmm. Two is because you weren't tense, you weren't also working against yourself, which is what we call control. Okay, I'm going to take a really big breath, and then I'm going to try to play. Mm -hmm. Working like mad to control. And the third is that you are using so much more of your body. And the, as I said in the beginning, the more of your body you use to play, the easier it's going to be because you're really distributing the work. That's what you're on and Stephen do every second that they're playing. So you want to try it again? Well, the thing that really controls the air coming out is really your ribs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at all these guys. How many are there? <laughs> How many notes in the chromatic scale? <laughs> you know it's going to be a theory lesson. <laughs> How many notes in the chromatic scale? Twelve. Yeah, twelve notes. From C to, C, from C to B on the piano is twelve notes. You have twelve sets of ribs, which makes twenty-four ribs. And all these joints up here move. I mean, the, the cartilage up here moves, and all those 24 joints in the back move. And when those ribs are moving, 
you can control how fast and how slow they go down. So let's just do a little experiment. Everybody pick up your flute. And we're going to play a uh, G, G above the staff. And we're going to play it. Take a big breath and blow all your air out in four counts. Here we go. Breathe. I'm going to count one, two, three. Inhale on four and then we'll play for four counts. One, two, three, three. Blow out. Now let's do the same thing, but blow it out for eight counts. One, two, three. Inhale. Good. That was pretty good. It didn't change much in dynamic. That's what I like. We want the same steady sound all the way through. Now let's do it for twelve. And notice how you're going to change the way your ribs are. Come, they're not going to come down any as fast. They're going to move a little bit slower. So let's do it one more time. One, two, three.